<laughs> Let's see you try and keep up with this on an adventure bike. <laughs> oh, something touched down. Oh, I've just knocked the camera off. That's done for. I'm like a bloody menace today. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and uh, look at what I'm riding today. This is a bike I've been eagerly awaiting to arrive because I think this could be my next motorcycle purchase. Potentially, potentially. I've been looking how much these are. I've been pricing things up. This is, of course, the brand new KTM 890 SMT. So basically it's like the 890 Adventure, but with some specific suspension and 17 inch wheels front and rear so they call it the a touring supermoto that's what the smt stands for supermoto touring um you know the, 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 there was the old 990 smt of years ago they brought it back to me this makes perfect sense because i love middleweight bikes I love the 890 Duke car. I love the Street Triple, but they're a little bit too small physically for me. You know, I'd look ridiculous on them. The SMT is a proper adventure bike size motorcycle with that little brilliant parallel twin KTM motor in it. 100 horsepower, 100 new meters of torque, lightweight-ish. This is 194 kilos dry. So probably just over 200, 210 with fuel in. But you know, it's not ridiculously heavy. It's got super sticky Michelin rubber. Oh, I mean, this, this for me has all the ingredients for a fantastic motorcycle. You know, I love the 890 Duke I rode a few weeks ago. There's a review at the top there. Brilliant bike, but just too small for a great big fatty like me. You know, six foot two, 20 stone fatty. Look ridiculous on it. I could never own it, even though I loved it. This. I don't know. This, on the other hand, makes a lot more sense for someone like me. So uh, strap yourselves in, because we're going to take this bike out for a little bit of a spin around the countryside, my usual first ride route. So if you're interested in 890 SMT, grab yourself a cup of something warm and chop the roll the intro. <laughs> on just enjoy the lines of the motorcycle i think this looks very very good i really like the look of the new sort of 890 adventure now where they've sort of joined this this bit of the bike and this bit of the bike that sort of the headlight used to sort of stand out on its own but it's all sort of joined together now on the smt you've not got the great big ball bag fuel tanks you've got a little bit of ball bag a little bit of ball bag but not the full ball bags <laughs> Not the 50-year-old uh, droopy ball bags. You've got more like your 20-year-old ball bags on this bike. Much firmer, much higher. I think it's a 16-litre fuel tank on this one, just under. You know, and things are sort of up here a bit more. The fuel's a little bit higher, but what they tell you is, you know, that helps it flip a bit more of a bit higher centre of gravity. Whatever. So jumping aboard this beauty, first thing you notice is the sort of the cockpit area. Nice big cockpit. The bars are pretty wide i was expecting the bars to be a little bit wider than that but they're, they're adequate if you go much wider than that i guess filtering just becomes a real pain doesn't it a little steering damper nestled down there at the bottom but yeah a nice layout a new dash the bike has the latest dash which is different to the uh, 890 duke i rode the other day this dash is like a new layout if you go into the menus uh, you get like you know it's all proper nice pictures of the bike and yeah a whole, whole new dash again which is uh, really nice only quite small i think it's five and a half inch but a you know, really nice little layout on the dashboard i like that same controls as what was on the Jew car the other day with the buttons you know i criticized these buttons it was just too many but you can set favorites on these so i've set favorites for rider modes traction control so you can do some favorites on there cruise control as well which is nice and uh, yeah let's fire up doesn't sound quite as nice as the 890r that sounded really snarly really angry not quite as angry and snarly 
as that bike, but still sounds pretty decent. Oh, my glasses! Forgot my glasses! I can't see! Oh, my glasses! Are they still on the back of the bike? Oh, what a fool! Quickly, let's get my glasses before they get run over. What a start to the review! There's my glasses in the middle of the road there. Oh no, that car's going to run straight over them! Well, that's an amazing start to the review. So we're having to do the rest of the video not being able to see. We're going to have to just rest the glasses on my face and hope they stay where they should be. Anyone else do that? I need glasses, but I can sort of see without them, so as soon as I forget... <laughs> Onwards, anyway. Oh, bollocks. So anyway, where was I before my glasses got destroyed? I have been extremely excited about this motorcycle and been nagging KTM to have a go on one. So I think I'm actually the first press bike that's gone out of KTM UK. So I've had the first one. So massive thanks KTM for, for letting me have the first bike. That's really appreciated. The reason I'm so excited about this, so I sort of touched on it at the beginning is, you know, I'm a big guy. I, I like the idea of a middleweight bike where you can use that engine and enjoy it on the road without something being ridiculously powerful. But middleweights for me are also so small, so tiny. Yeah, you can get middleweight adventure bikes and they're great, but I've not really got any interest to go off-road on my adventure bike. Using the, D, the 800DE the other day, the V-Strom, I did really enjoy taking that off-road. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe I would want to go off-road a little bit, but I think with all the lanes closing, I think it'll just become a novelty. And I, in practice, I probably wouldn't do it very often. And then you've got a 21-inch front wheel and off-road suspension. You know, just for the 1% of the time, you may actually decide to do a trail on it and it's like it's not worth it this with its 17 inch wheels super sticky rubber you know super moto suspension so the suspension on this bike is on no other model it's, it's dedicated for this machine it's specific to this bike this wp 43 millimeter apex suspension forks up front you know they're on no other model it's not just the 890 adventure suspension you know you know, these are specific to this bike, to get the geometry right to make it handle, you know, because this basically is an adventure bike made to handle. This is like a mini Pikes Peak. I mean, I keep going on about wanting a Pikes Peak, but they're like £27,000. I can't afford it. <laughs> I cannot afford to buy a Pikes Peak unless I sell my H2, and I don't want to do that. I'm keeping that, by the way. But so, you know, but this is like a mini cheap half price Pikes Peak, actually cheaper than half price. The biggest sort of disappointment about this bike when I saw the specs were released was the fact that they had put, they hadn't put the Duke car engine in it. You know, they'd put the adventure engine in this machine. Now it's basically the same engine, but the adventure has 100 horsepower, 100 newton meters of torque. Whereas the Duke R has 120 horsepower and I think 99 newton meters of torque. The Duke R also revs another thousand RPM. It redlines at 10,000. This redlines at nine. The Duke R has different cams, different compression. So it is actually, you know, there are some hardware differences between the Adventure engine and the Duke R engine. It's not just a map. It's not just different mapping. There is some physical differences on the engine itself so you can't just get this remapped and get the 120 horsepower but saying all of that i think this engine in the adventure has more usable torque so you've got more initial shove on the torque yeah it doesn't it's 100 horsepower rather than 120 at the top but it's got a load of urgency when you just pull the throttle when you twist the grip it really does shoot off and you know, but maybe, maybe it's actually a better tune for this sort of bike. The handling of this bike, oh, it is, it is beautiful. It's everything I thought it would be. The suspension is firm, but not really firm. Not as firm as my SMCR, sort of in the middle. And it just gives you loads of support. You know, not too much fork dive, a little bit of fork dive. You know, it, it is a... It is a bigger bike than an SMCR, but 
you know it's everything i wanted it to be it's so flickable you know it changes direction so quickly you can lay it on its side you know yeah oh, the handling is perfect it rides all of the bumps perfectly you know it's not wallowy it's not too stiff now this apex suspension is very good i said on the due car how impressed i was with this wp suspension and it is very good very good on here when it may not be electronically adjustable like the pikes peak it may not be gold and blingy but it is superb it is superb you've got a remote rear preload adjuster so you can twiddle the knob <laughs> and you can adjust the preload at the rear the forks don't have any preload they're just compression and rebound damping which is the normal it's normal that for ktm they don't normally give you preload on the forks just compression and rebound damping don't know why don't know why they're a bit stingy with their preload on the on their forks but you've got full adjustability on the rear and it's decent decent suspension the riding position is nice it's sort of quite neutral you're sat upright the bars my arms are sort of nicely spaced you know it's like i said it could be a little bit wider the bars but then it would make filtering a bit of a problem but they're nice and wide you know i've got my arms are straight they're, you know on the, on the due car i was sort of in a bit the bars were in here a little bit felt a little bit cramped i'm sort of spaced out nicely on this foot peg position is sort of directly below my hips really it's, it's a really comfortable position the seat on this bike is like a memory foam seat. I've never tried, I've never ridden another bike with a seat like this. It just feels like memory foam. I don't know whether it is, but it's just super soft. And uh, yeah, it's a really comfortable seat. I mean, I spent two and a half hours on this bike, on the motorway, riding it back from KTM in, in perfect comfort. I'm going to take this on a little bit of a day trip as well, while I've got it. We're going to go on a little bit of a day trip. So there'll be another video where I take this somewhere for the day so we get a better idea of fuel range, comfort, you know, long distance comfort. But just the way it changes direction and handles and, and it gives you confidence, that's the thing. It just, you know, it just, you know you, yeah, these bikes are 21 inch front wheels, 19 inch front wheels, they feel okay. But it's not until you ride an adventure bike with proper 17 inch sticky rubber, you realise how good they can be. You realise the difference. It is exceptionally brilliant. <laughs> it is exceptionally well set up with that 17 inch front. You know, and I think that because they've got special suspension, you know, not just the usual suspension, they've got dedicated suspension. It, it, yeah, it really handles beautifully, this bike. You've also got USB on the dash down here you've also got a 12 volt charger so you've got a usb charger and a separate 12 volt charger so all of your charging and navigation charging is dealt with it comes with cruise control which works very well it's got full electronic suite of course with the ktms you've got to unlock all of those electronics if you want to keep them it's got the demo mode enabled at the moment so i've got quick shift to blipper but of course after 1500 kilometers that'll all get turned off so you've got to decide if you want to then buy buy the thing so it's 12 and a half but sort of budget another 700 quid for the quick shifter and the tech pack what is that is that a, that's an rd350 very nice sir hill climb let's chuck it through some twisties i mean <laughs> Let's see you try and keep up with this on an adventure bike. <laughs> oh, something touched down. Oh, I've just knocked my camera off. I've just lost my camera now. I've just ripped it off. This is not my day today, is it? This is turning into a very expensive test ride. Oh, let's go back and get my camera now. Broke my glasses, broke my camera. I broke a camera on track when I crashed the ZX-10 as well. So I'm down to, to one inch to 360 now. Oh God, this is a nightmare. This is a bloody nightmare. I'm like a bloody menace today. I should just go home and give up on this today. Yeah, that's, um, that's done for, that's done for. So we've got my glasses, rear end, camera, rear end. 
we could bring out the other ruined camera. I broke my mount as well, so I can't even mount it to the bike. <laughs> oh, God. I laugh. This, this, this ride's turning quite expensive. Guys, if you wouldn't mind watching the adverts in this one. <laughs> I've got some, uh, some parts to pay for. So there we are, Camp one camera down, a pair of glasses down. What else can go wrong? <laughs> the bike's still in one piece, for the moment. So handling, 30 miles left on the range now, is exceptionally good, good enough to rip off your action camera. But yeah, it's incredible. I'd like to see an adventure bike keep up with this round here. It just wouldn't. And why has there not been a bike like this before? Why is it why is it taken this long for someone to come and invent something like this? Or invent or reinvent something, see alright. Reinvent something like this. I know Ducati have been doing the Pikes Peak for many years, yeah, the 1200, the 1260, and now the V4. But that's always been top tier, a top tier motorcycle. Now why has someone not done it before with sort of one of these middleweight adventure bikes? This is brilliant, KTM, I love this! Let's give it a little bit of a tickle. <laughs> yeah, it's quick. I mean, first and second, it's spinning, trying to wheelie. It's got the wheelie control on. You can turn the wheelie control off. You've got a bit, it's a bit of a faff. I've got some shortcuts here. If you push down here, I've shortcutted it to the, the traction control. You've got to push the button and then push the throttle in or something or that, that and then off and then hold the button down let go of the throttle now it's off so it's, it's a, it is a bit of a faff to turn the uh, the traction control off on this bike and when you turn the bike on and off the traction comes back on again i mean even on even suzuki's the traction control stays off these days it shouldn't be like that on a ktm it's ready to race when i turn my traction control off it should stay off Traction and wheelie is tied together, so you can't have separate traction and wheelie, which, it, which you could do because this bike's got a full IMU, the latest IMU, you know, lean sensitive ABS, lean sensitive traction control. It would be relatively straightforward to separate traction and wheelie, I'm sure it would. Why they don't do that on the middleweight bikes, I don't know. You know, all the hardware's there to do it, it's just a software thing because they're saving that for the more expensive stuff. I don't care, I want it on the middleweight stuff. It's brilliant this has got cruise control though, because some of the middleweight stuff, they don't even give you bloody cruise control, do they? But a set of twisties, <laughs> it is just phenomenal. Phenomenal on the brakes. I, I was quite surprised actually how good these brakes are, because they look like they're going to be pretty budget, don't they? But it's actually got a decent amount of power and feel there. They're, they're not Dilemas, you know, they're not the same setup as the Ju car. The Ju car is incredible and it's not the same as that, which is a shame. And I guess that is this bike's problem at the moment. That is the biggest problem with this bike, is it's not got the R bits and pieces. And I just don't know whether they're gonna make an R version. I guess it will depend on how this version sells. And I think that is actually putting a lot of people off buying this. There might be an R version. People have said, oh, I'm going to wait for the R version. Uh, it's like, well, why don't they just make this, the SMTR, and be done with it? You know, why didn't they do that? Because it's a bit irritating, isn't it? That there may be an R, there may or may not be an R, we don't know. You know, oh. What is very impressive with this bike is the vibrations. You know, after riding the Transalp and the V-Strom and those other parallel twins, they're a little bit vibey, like through the foot pegs and stuff at certain revs. This isn't at all. This has a tiny little bit of vibe through the bars, but hardly anything. Nothing through the foot pegs, nothing through the seats. And, and the 890 Duke, now this engine is brilliant. I have to say, I think this KTM 890 parallel twin I think it's the best parallel twin motor that's out there. It is, uh, say, vibe-free, it's powerful, it's economical, you know, it's a little bit special, this 890 motor, I have to say. 
and uh, yeah, just the fact that it's so vibe free compared to even smaller capacity ver parallel twins which are more vibey than a bigger parallel twin so and they're going to have extra balancing shafts and all of that I don't know how many balancing shafts are in the KTM version maybe it's got three <laughs> I suspect it's just got one but maybe the actual crank is balanced better who knows but it is really not vibey at all which is makes it really comfortable throttle response is also excellent you know in the sport mode it's really punchy maybe even a little bit too punchy for sort of normal riding so you know maybe the street mode would be better but I, I like that bit of punch there on the motorway let's get it up to motorway speeds 70 miles an hour we're doing just over 4,000 revs four and a half thousand revs I've got no air sort of on my chest because that little that frontage of the bike but my whole helmet is in air so you know that screen doesn't give you masses of of wind protection you can see now 75 it's quite a windy day as well they've got a lot of wind noise so it's clean air that's the thing it's it's not turbulent air i hope you've enjoyed the video this is just really just a very quick first look at this bike first ride i will be back as i said doing a a trip somewhere on it a day trip somewhere so we can really test out the tank range we can test out the comfort and see what it is like to put a bit of distance on it so if that sounds of interest don't forget subscribe below and i'll see you on the next video cheers guys What are my glasses up to? They're on my face still, just about all pissed. <laughs> oh, I can't afford a new bike now, I've got to buy new glasses and new action cameras.